If you've seen my other videos, you know that Bloodborne is my favorite game of all time. It was also my first ever FromSoft game, so Central Yharnam was the first actual level I played in the entire series, which adds so much personal significance to it. This area has to be one of my favorite areas in the entire Soulsborne series. Let's do a deep analysis into the level design of Central Yharnam and what makes it so great. Without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Central Yharnam is a level that is fantastic from beginning to end. I love how at the beginning of the game you wake up in Yusefka's clinic and it's this rundown, spooky hospital and it's extremely terrifying. I had no idea what was going on when I first played. I had no insight on the story whatsoever, and I was extremely confused. The enemies are like these crazed townsfolk, and the whole vibe of the city just felt like this apocalyptic free-for-all. The developers did a great job with the subtle foreshadow of Cleric Beast as you're climbing up the ladder, and you hear that mysterious and horrific scream. The first time I heard that, it made me freeze and look around and like look over my shoulder to see what was going on. It's a moment I will never forget. And then I stumbled across Gilbert. I saw the window light was on and a dialogue option, and I was so relieved to hear a friendly voice that seemed like it wanted to help me. Like I said, I was so confused at this point. He was the first real person I encountered who could give me even just a little bit of info about what was going on in the game. Now for the level design, I loved it. I love how one of the first enemies you encounter after Gilbert is a jump scare, adding to that survival horror aspect of the game. I love how the enemies are these mobs of townsfolk, carrying around pitchforks and torches like it's one of those classic folk tales that you hear about. I also really like how you can knock on random doors to get some more info about what's going on, as if you're this investigator. Like, that's how I really felt this whole game. Like, I was an investigator trying to figure out what went wrong in this city. When you knock on the doors, everybody's telling you, Oh, you're stuck outside on the night of the hunt. That's tough. It makes the town feel less abandoned. Like, it's not like everybody has gone crazy. There's still people who are shacked up inside their houses, trying to survive and avoid all the chaos. And then the moment I came across the giant burning beast was just unreal. After seeing these angry mobs of people with pitchforks and torches, and then I come across the giant burning beast, it really added to that classic angry mob folktale vibe that I was talking about earlier. This part of the game was extremely hard for me as well. I kid you not when I say I spent an hour and a half just trying to get to that like big bridge area, trying to just get past this part up to that big bridge. For some reason on my first playthrough, and it being my first Souls game, I thought I had to kill everything. So then I said to myself, uh, why don't I just run past all these enemies? I've already gotten all the items, so that kind of helped me get the progression going a little bit. I love the different routes that you can take in this level and how complex it is. There are so many twists and turns and it's very easy to get lost. But that being said, there's also a ton of interconnectivity that help you understand and learn the level. Like when I opened the door after talking to the little girl in the window, I was like, oh, so this is that locked door from earlier. I really feel like the interconnectivity of this level is what makes it the cream of the crop. It's so big, yet so small when using all the different shortcuts. When I first played this game, this was the most confusing area I had ever experienced in any video game, but by the end of the level, I knew it like the back of my hand. One of my favorite moments in this level is when I finally got to the bridge and noticed two giant beasts guarding it. I was like, uh, hell no. And then I noticed that the devs give you a side path that seems like it should obviously be taken. So I go down the side route and I come across this hidden sewer. As I fight my way through the sewer, at the very end, I'm rewarded with a badass hunter outfit from the cover of the game. I love this moment because I was rewarded with my first dope armor set after deciding to take the side route and save the big beasts for later. This was also the moment where I learned that this game isn't just a cut and dry level. There are secrets and I really need to look through every nook and cranny, which leads me to my next point. Another amazing moment for me, and one I will never forget, is when I found Elaine the Crow. As I smashed the barrels and found that little entrance to the rafters of that room, I also noticed a small mysterious door. I legit will never forget this. I made my way towards the door, and on the other side of it was this badass looking person just standing there alone with their back turned. At this point, I thought it was an enemy. 
I inched my way closer and closer, being extremely cautious. Then finally, a talk button appeared, and I was rattled. I was like, no way! After fighting and dying, and fighting and dying even more, finally a person who doesn't want to attack me. A real person. This is unreal. This was my first ever encounter with an NPC in the real world. Before this, all I ever encountered was Gilbert in the window, Garmin, and the doll. So this moment was legendary for me. This was the first time I really got that feeling of relief that the Soulsborne games give you. Everywhere you go, there's enemies trying to kill you and death around every corner. It's this constant feeling of dread. So when I stumbled across Elaine, who was friendly, I got the greatest sense of relief. This is something the FromSoft games do so well. In other games, there's a plethora of NPCs you can talk to, which makes them feel very insignificant. I find myself skipping through the dialogue, not talking to every single one of the NPCs, but with the FromSoft games, there's only a handful of NPCs, and when literally everything is trying to kill you, when you finally come across somebody who's friendly, it makes the encounter so significant. I feel safe when I'm around these NPCs, a moment where I can just relax, take a break from all of the death and chaos, and listen closely to some amazing dialogue which is usually jam-packed with lore that I can start to decipher and analyze. This is what makes the Souls games so special for me. Now for her as an NPC, she's a legend. Her armor is so sick with the crow's feathers, and her mask resembles one of those like old plague doctors. So sick. Her lore is also great. I'm not going to get super deep into it, but she's basically a hunter of hunters, who's basically killing hunters who have gone mad with bloodlust. Just so cool. Now as we progress, we begin descending deeper and deeper into the depths of Yarnum. We finally reach another sewer area, and as we progress through that, we reach a ladder that brings us back up to the streets of Yarnum, which is one of the first examples of that interconnectivity that I was discussing earlier. The way you can really feel the verticality in the level is amazing. You descend very deep into the sewers, but then arise back up on the streets, and you start kind of piecing the level together like a puzzle. It seems like everything in this level revolves around that giant main bridge in the middle, which eventually leads to the Cleric Beast boss fight. But before you even fight Cleric Beast, you have those two menacing beast dogs that you have to deal with, which almost feels like a mini boss itself. I love how if you choose to run past these two beasts, there's escape routes on either side. You can go down the stairs on the left side into that small house, or you can go down the little hidden path on the right side. I also love that little house on the left side. This area is very dark and has multiple ambushes inside of it, adding to that survival horror aspect of the game, which I think gives Bloodborne a very distinct identity amongst the other Souls games. I will never forget when I saw the item in the corner of the house, but didn't notice the dude sitting in the wheelchair who one-shotted me. When I finally made my way back there, I was able to read the note stating, When the hunt began, the healing church left us, blocking the great bridge to Cathedral Ward, as old Yarnum burned to the ground that moonlit night. Now at the moment, I had no idea what the f*** this meant, but this was still very interesting and mysterious. When I did reach old Yarnum and I saw it burn to bits, I clearly remembered this note and I felt like I was piecing together the story like I was an investigator. Now when you finally reach the end of the level, you come across my all-time favorite boss in the entire series, Father Gascoigne. I'm not going to get super deep into the boss fight itself, you can view my top 5 favorite Soulsborne boss video if you want to see that, but his fight is amazing. The opening cutscene is unreal, and the fight itself is jaw dropping. Great mechanics, great atmosphere, and incredible lore which ties back to the NPC questline in Central Yarnum. A great way to end one of my all time favorite levels. Now as we progress through the game and gain more insight, you begin to notice a lot of changes in the game and its environments. When you reach the end game, you can go back to Central Yarnum and see some very interesting changes. Gilbert, one of the first NPCs you come across, is clearly very sick when you first meet him. If you come back to his house during endgame, you see his window is broken and his lights are off in his house, and you're instead greeted with a hideous beast. This was a very cool yet sad moment in the game for me, as Gilbert, one of the most friendly NPCs in the game, has succumbed to his sickness and turns into a violent beast who tries to kill you. Another change I really liked in Central Yarnum is when you knock on people's doors and instead of the same dialogue that you heard at the beginning of the game, you just hear horrific screams coming from inside, as if everybody is just going crazy, and the whole world really feels like it's coming to an end. It really adds to the world building and the atmosphere in Bloodborne, which makes the game so great. Overall, Bloodborne is an amazing game, easily my favorite game of all time, and I think Central Yarnum is a perfect opening level to a video game. 
that's going to be it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure to smash that like button and that subscribe button if you want to see some more content. It's Tony Sauce, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.